Okay, continuing with Are You Afraid of the Dark, going to Season 3, Episode 6. This is the tale of the bookish babysitter, and uh, I have strong memories of this one from childhood as well, because I always had a crush on the girl in this episode who plays the babysitter. I just always kind of like the independent, artistic, short-haired, 90s type girls, probably because, you know, that's the type of girls I'd see on TV and in my life when I was young. And I never really had a hot young babysitter, which is a bummer. <laughs> but anyways, the the plot of this one is Ricky Winter. He's a metalhead, and he's sexually frustrated, pre-adolescent, who hates women, and he especially hates books. He's a terror for most babysitters, but Belinda is different. See, Belinda is a Wiccan who likes to smoke weed, read people's palms at the local dive bar. She also likes to babysit kids for extra cash on the side. She forces him to read these magic books that send him on a psychedelic trip where he discovers his imagination. So basically, this kid's a little shit, and uh, he just likes to sit on the couch and watch TV. Belinda comes to babysit him, and she forces him to read. And when he reads these books, they come to life. Um, I thought this was a pretty cool concept. The story is it's almost like a commentary on the storytelling. You see, he starts these books, but he doesn't finish them. And then this evil witch kind of tricks him into burning the books. So to get the, the monsters out of his house, he has to make up the end of the story. And he tries to say, okay, the story ends and everything's fine. But Belinda tells him that won't work. And he tries to say, oh, we go down to the basement and there's an Uzi and I killed him. And she says that won't work either because there weren't Uzis at that time. And it's kind of a, I mean, it's very slight, but it's sort of a commentary on storytelling. Uh, oh, another thing I really like is near the end of the episode, the, the kid's saved by his metal shirt for a band called Severance. I wonder if they're real. But uh, I thought that was pretty cool. It's actually a pretty cool band name, too. Uh, I really liked the performance of the babysitter. She did a good job of being the sort of creepy witch who steals children's stories and plagiarizes them, probably publishes them for great profit or something. And the kid, I, I thought he was really good at being annoying shithead. I don't know if he was... A great actor or just being himself or what it was probably good acting but uh well this episode also had a quote i really liked too when the kid's reading early on with this babysitter he says this one's lousy too and she says why and then he says there's too many words <laughs> i thought that was kind of funny okay so i thought this one had a good concept but a pretty weak resolution the ending of the story wasn't entirely clever and didn't really uh come around in an interesting way but uh for the good concept the cute chick uh i'll give it four. Oh, and this was also a betty ann story another thing i was thinking while i was watching this was wouldn't it be cool let's say there's an anthology show like are you afraid of the dark except each character gets their own writer and their own director so you know let's say for you breaking bad fans like you'd be excited because you find out, oh, this week's a Betty Ann story. Vince Gilligan always writes and directs her episodes. Wouldn't that be cool if it was like all these great writers and directors who kind of gave each of the characters their own voice? I thought that'd be kind of nice. But that wasn't really the case with the show. Okay, season three, episode seven, The Tale of the Carved Stone. This is a Gary story. And I think I kind of realized that Gary is the best at storytelling. Not, not you know, the scripts of the episodes because, of course, the actor didn't write them. But, I mean, his performance in telling stories. I feel like he's the best at it. Now this one is about Allison. She's new in town, can't make any friends. Don't know where I've heard that one before. That comes up a lot in this show. She goes to Sardo, if you remember him, the reoccurring sort of a swindly magic shop owner that shows up in Gary's stories. He sells her a friendship amulet and uh, gives her this um, phony sort of magic spell to uh enchant the uh, in to chant just chant no en while she holds the stone it's supposed to make her friends but of course it doesn't work and then she finds out that when she gets near a mirror with the stone it's actually a portal through time and she meets the kid who used to live in the old house she lives in now and she also meets an evil monk who wants his amulet back you know this was one that i wasn't too excited to watch again it's kind of typical though Performance of the main girl was all right, and Sardo is always a lot of fun. But, uh, yeah, it's the the kid who she meets from the past didn't think he was too nifty. 
and uh, it ends. The ending was really confusing. It's like the monk keeps coming after them. Uh, the monk and the girl kind of fall backwards, and the kid from the past shoots a slingshot at them and breaks this mirror. And uh, it was kind of convoluted. Didn't really understand how the ending totally worked. And uh, yeah, this episode didn't do a whole ton for me, so I'm giving it a two. Not one I'd be excited to watch again, really. All right, now on to episode eight, The Tale of the Guardian's Curse. This is a mummy episode. Kind of a typical mummy story. These two kids, their father works at a museum. They're supposed to go on vacation and go skiing. You could tell they're rich because their father has a really swoopy, like, flock of seagulls haircut. That always indicated someone was rich in, like, 80s and 90s TV and movies. But anyways, uh, he finds that there's this old tomb that was actually hidden in the museum with this mummy, so they can't go on their vacation. The mummy comes back to life. They get haunted. There's this magic ring crazy inscriptions and stuff i don't know it was hard to pay attention to this one one thing that really excited me about this episode though was butnik from salute your shorts the actor's name is actually danny Cookski. he he was had a small role in uh, terminator 2 also and he he does a lot of voice acting now he was the voice actor who did montana max on tiny tune adventures this guy's really cool i always like him and uh for you wrestling fans out there he kind of reminded me of cm punk when i was watching him this episode like the way cm punk gives promos and his voice kind of sounds like owen hart too his hair was fucking awesome i loved his hair in this episode <laughs> but uh other than that that uh, was nothing too special about this episode it's actually a rare twist because him and his sister are going around you know they think they're getting chased by a mummy the whole time they're smelling these weird smells and it turns out that one of his dad's co-workers is actually just following them around trying to get the magic ring that they stole from them. And the smell was kerosene that he uh, poured all over the museum because he's going to burn them all to death and use the magic ring to live forever. But as it turns out, the magic ring only turns him into a statue to immortalize him. And uh, the mummy was also real. She comes to life. She has sex with her dad. Yeah, this one didn't really do too much for me either. And I think it's because the story didn't really have much to do with the kids. It was just them being scared of a monster, but there wasn't really any change going on or any uh, r interesting relationships in it. So, yeah, and I usually just don't really care for mummy stories. I can't really think of one that I liked. I liked The Mummy, you know, with Brendan Frazier, but uh, I never really enjoyed any mummy horror stories. I haven't seen any of the classic ones, though, so maybe I just haven't enjoyed any of the TV ripoffs of mummy stories that I've seen. But anyways, this one didn't do much for me. Tucker, oh no, it's a Tucker story. But uh, Danny Cooksey, that guy's cool. I like him. Okay, so that's it for this. Oh, and I gave that one a two. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.